Okay. Now we got it. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for going through that with me. We've got it sorted out. Very good. All right, we got it all sorted out now. Hey, thanks everybody for uh, dealing with that. We're, we're good. We're going to get started here shortly. As always, enjoy the memes. We all here. Perfect. Very good. All right, that's enough of the intro. Thank you, Sonic D, for that intro music. Great intro music, as always. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> uh, I am in Austin, Texas, and thanks so much for watching, clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. Hopefully you're hearing me okay. Hopefully it sounds good. Hopefully everything's all right. We're going to be talking about different radio services depending on what it is you like to do, right? We often, ham radio operators, you watching me, uh, you we often do ham radio because ham radio is what we do. But there are plenty of you out there that like to off-road, or you're preparedness-minded, or you do a myriad of other things. And that's what today's show is going to be, live from Austin, Texas, from a, or I should go this way, undisclosed location. Some of you may know what that is. Ah, I am a... Yeah, go ahead and change the resolution. I should be putting out 1080p right now. I am going to open this. This is a Austin local brewery, the Suds Monkey. Picked this up yesterday. I'm doing it right now. So it's been a long day. We've been shooting video all day. And I definitely don't want to pour beer on uh, these wonderful people's uh, <laughs> live studio. Yeah, it's my natural halo. So there we go. How's that? That's a little bit better. No background on the chat. Oh well, we'll have to deal with it. Mm. Very good. How's everybody doing today? I hope everybody's well. I have been shooting video all day on site in Austin, Texas with, uh, with a very nice group of people, which we'll, we'll talk about. You'll find out more about in the future. That's kind of how these things go. But that's not what you care about, right? You care about uh, ham radio, which is why you're here. So thanks again. And yes, I'm, I'm rocking the cat cup. Mm. All right. Let's check the chat. The light behind me is creating a glare. Okay, let me turn this off. I use the same lights on my videos at home. That's always fun. Okay, how's that? Better? Better? Good? Good. Cat cup. That's right. Uh, care about the beer. So this is a oatmeal stout from the Suds, Monkey Suds, Suds Monkey. i get you the side there. Big shout out to Suds Monkey. They're right down the street from where I'm at. No light is better. I've got a light off me here um, and everything else is kind of fine already. Thanks for the subscriptions. Appreciate it. Whoa. Don't know what's going on there, but it'll sort itself out. Much less potato. Okay, good on the no potato. All right, so anyway, just want to say thanks again, but let's, uh, let's dive into things a little bit because we got a lot to talk about. And uh, yeah, you've, I've, I've taken enough of your time. So hopefully you stick around here. So where did my in websites go? Everything disappeared again. There we go. We got it now. Check in the chat. On the podcast, so, okay, my wife's in the house, very good. Leia, I miss you, I'll see you uh, soon here. All right, without further ado, let's just get started, because uh, otherwise I'm just going to be dominating your time, so here we go. All right, slides time. And again, what are we talking about? Ham radio for ham radio's sake, right? Not exactly where I wanted to start. There we go. The right radio for what you do, that's the point of this. So that's what we're going to be talking about, whether it is... Ham or GMRS or FRS or CB, 
what is it that you should or I should recommend that you check out if you're getting started in something like ham radio? Because there's a, a myriad of different ways to do this, right? Um, don't just take my word for a lot of it, but I will run you through my thoughts and we'll have a little logical discussion on it and hopefully we will lead to some uh, better understanding. So let's see if this works. It did work, excellent. Derp, derp, derp. Hey, look at that, that's how you do that. And then you go like that, and there you go. Now you got, <laughs> you got a chat room that works. <laughs> okay, <laughs> very good. <coughs> hey, Alex jo uh, Johnson, thank you for the super chat. Going to need you to yell because I'm a modern rogue. Uh, I'm the only one here right now. So, cheers. Um, I guess I qualify as a modern rogue now. Although, in this case, I'm, I'm a bit of an expert. Ranger Smith says, all of the above for me lost all comms in the Xmas Day Nashville bombing. Wow. I'm not going to let that happen again. Wow. Okay. Well, with that said, uh, we'll be talking about preparedness too. So, okay, ham radio for ham radio's sake. Ham, GMRS, FRS, CB, my channel, as you have been watching, hopefully, maybe. Maybe you're finding me for the first time. If you have, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. I know my channel is primarily ham radio. That's what we do out here, right? We play ham radio. Ham radio for ham radio's sake. It's been mentioned by other people, but uh, I understand what they're saying. That there are a lot of people who don't want to do ham radio for ham radio's sake. Don't want to go to a park necessarily and just make contacts. And I understand. I get it. <coughs> so that's what we're going to be talking about today and kind of who we're going to be talking about. I'm going to break down some of the services at a very high level, and then I'm going to go through the process of talking about these different groups, meaning who are these people that uh, may not want to do ham radio for ham radio's sake. And that may be you, or maybe you are a ham radio operator, but just kind of adjacent, you know, you're, you ride around the edges. So maybe that's something that will be a little bit helpful. Yeah, so while I can make the case as to how you can use ham radio in most situations to communicate, I can figure out a solution for ham radio. I can give you like, oh, I want to be prepared for an emergency. Okay, great. Ham radio is the thing for you. I could do that, but I realize that that's not always the best solution, and it may not be the solution you're looking for, nor is it necessarily the cheapest solution. So we're going to break that down a little bit today. All right. So explaining the radio services, we're going to start with breaking down the different radio services and kind of build up from there. We're going to start with FRS, GMRS. It's the one where you can get started for nothing, uh, just buying a very inexpensive radio in the case of FRS. GMRS, though, generally requires a license. Family radio service and ground mobile radio service, GMRS, they both operate in the ultra high frequency space, UHF space which is also a part of the amateur radio 70 centimeters space that you know hams get access to with our, with our ham radios. FRS and GMRS share some frequencies. GMRS has some of their own frequencies in which you can use higher power radios. Max output for FRS is about two watts output and GMRS gives you 50 watts output, okay? The radio coverage is channelized, meaning you have frequency spaces that are carved out. It's channel one, it's channel six, it's channel four, whatever. And everything is frequency modulated, which is generally the same thing as your Baofengs or your other uh, ham radio derivative handheld radios. These are generally consumer goods. FRS radios in particular are blister packed radios, something that you would find at like a Walmart, something that is a almost pseudo consumable. You throw batteries in the back of it, you give it to the kids, and uh, they're able to talk in the backyard and play Johnny SWAT Team Commando, something like that. In the case of GMRS, some GMRS radios or areas that you may live with GMRS has repeaters. So just like ham radio repeaters, which is a term you may have heard about, it's kind of like a more powerful radio, usually on a mountaintop, that people will talk into and it'll transmit down to them and people will get, hey, an idea of brighter, broader coverage for your comms. To me, FRS and GMRS is kind of like a, a less complicated step than ham radio. That's not saying it's bad, it's just saying that it's a less complicated step. Uh, 
Perp, perp, perp. Make sure I got the chat. All right. Yeah, uh, so that that radio that's pictured there is a Kenwood Free Talk. I picked that up at the ham radio outlet in Anaheim. It has an antenna that folds down. It is a very old radio. I think Marty was saying in the chat, man, it looks like an old radio. It is an old radio. Good radio, though, because it has a, a scrambler function. You should not use a scrambler function with a radio. That is uh, not something you should do. That is not exactly legal. Also, I'm missing something. Oh, well, we'll make do without it. Okay. How are we doing? Everything look good still? Okay, good. Good. Sorry, I was just checking. All right. So licensing requirements. Generally for FRS and GMRS, there's two separate licensing requirements. FRS does not require a license, but it has a max of two watts output on some channels. On other channels, it's half a watt, or a little bit more than half a watt in most cases. Most Walmart or blister pack two-way radios are going to be FRS, family radio service radios. GMRS, on the other hand, uh, is similar, similar radio types than uh, to FRS, but GMRS has a 50 watt output maximum, which generally means you're going to be using a mobile type radio, like something that would go in your car, and their handhelds top out at 5 watts generally. However, to get a license, you're going to need to spend about $75, and that goes through an application with the FCC. This license, though, is good for 10 years, and it covers your immediate family as well as some of your broader family. And by that, I mean uh, parents, so grandparents, um, in-laws, I think, are covered as well. But that means your significant other, your children, your main family nucleus is covered under one license. It works similar to ham radio in that you do need to give your call sign, and you do get a GMRS call sign when you are making contacts, when you, uh, every 10 minutes or when you close out the contact. Actually, every time you transmit with GMRS is when you have to use your call sign. So keep that in mind. And eventually, although we haven't heard when, we've been all kind of waiting for this, that $75 fee is going to drop to $35. The FCC has implemented or will soon implement a change in their fee base structure where uh, most of the radio services, including ham radio, will begin to pay a fee. And that fee is going to go from 75 to 35 in the case of GMRS. And in the case of ham radio, go from zero to $35. So a bit of a bummer for ham, but a great deal for GMRS. So if you're not GMRS licensed and you've been thinking about it, perhaps wait a little bit because you're going to save $50, which is like, that is, that is a whole set of radios right there. All right, important note for most Jeepers out there. GMRS is now official radio of Jeep Jamboree. Hey, thank you for that, Paul, great uh, great note. So you have to have one now, CB is gone. Um, we're gonna talk about that, but I am inclined to agree with you. So let's just say that up front. My four-year-old daughter, this is uh, KO4EOD. Uh, what is that, improvised? No, expl it would be OED, improvised explosive device, well, anyway. I don't know what I'm thinking. It's been a long day of uh, recording. We started, uh, we've been going for six hours straight out in the Texas heat and humidity. It's been hot. But he says, my four-year-old daughter loves GMRS V1HT. She is having fun calling CQ to me in the house. Laugh out loud, teach some young folks. Hey, I love that. That's a, that's a great point. Uh, Christiana, Christiana, that's not necessarily true. She says July 15th, the $35 fee goes into effect. I didn't want to take a tangent here, but uh, Rhea, Rhea of the Hudson District of the ARRL, she actually posted to her Facebook. I suggest everybody who's interested in following along with ARRL news and some of the FCC news, Rhea is very up to date. She posted that uh, the 15th is not the date that it will be implemented. And let me explain why. I want to be really clear, we're taking a tangent let me explain. The $35 fee is something that has not existed for hands, and more specifically, or it existed in a long time. There are VEs, volunteer examiners. These are the people that you do your test with. You sometimes pay them to implement the test or provide the test to you. Now they're being asked to take 
not just the ten dollars potentially 15 that they charge you to provide the test to you they're also being tasked with taking the 35 dollars and sending it off to the fcc there is no mechanism at this point for ve's to send money directly to the fcc that connective tissue have, has never existed so time is needed for all these VEs and, and VECs to all come to the agreement of how they're going to implement this $35 fee. So Rhea has more information. She is, uh, go check her out on Facebook. I highly recommend it. Good, good post from Rhea. She's also on YouTube, which is uh, Rhea's Ham Shack. Uh, somebody, if we have an admin, drop a link for her. That would be great. Kenny Careberry, got my ticket today. Big thanks to you for all the help. Helpful and educational content, KC1IIQ. Hey, thank you, Kenny. I appreciate the super chat from the cat cup to you, 73. All right, let's keep on a rolling. So why you should consider FRS and GMRS? Simplicity. It's a channelized radio service. You pick it up and you go, I'm on channel six. You can even add a privacy um, tone to it, which would tell your radio, don't open up the speaker, if you will. Don't open up the squelch if the transmitted signal, it, signal into it is not using the same privacy tone. This is not encryption. This is not scrambling. This is nothing like that. It is merely just a way that you can kind of put all the radios on the same channelized privacy tone. I'm just repeating what it is. It allows you to basically have a couple of radios that some person that's on the same channel with you doesn't interfere with you, which can be helpful if you're at a sporting event or just a large event in general or you're at Disneyland, whatever. It just makes your core group of people with your same radios a little bit more immune from having interference. So that's one of the reasons why it's it's good. It, it's simple. You can do the same thing with, with um, ham radio, but you don't need a license, particularly for FRS. And worst case scenario, $35 and your whole family's covered. So you go, here you go, son, here you go, daughter. They're all keyed up. Just turn them on and you can talk. And your uncle's got one and he's he's also keyed up and grandpa's got one. And we're all going to get in the car and we're going to caravan down to Laughlin, Nevada. I don't know. Most are very inexpensive. There are myriads of options of FRS and GMRS radios. There is Dory the Explorer FRS radios, and then there's really good GMRS radios like uh, Midland produces good radios. There are Baofeng derivative, specifically GR, GMRS radios that are approved and type, type accepted for GMRS that are available and purchasable and work pretty well because they've had some of their bugs fixed. So it's easy to recommend them as well. Uh, and yeah, Midland, American company that produces or sells radios specifically in the GMRS FRS space. Handhelds and mobile radios exist for GMRS. So again, for, for you Jeep folks who are running in a Jeep and you want an external antenna that puts out 50 watts of power to the radio or through the radio, GMRS is a great option. That's way better than CB. That is going to perform incredibly better for all close in line of sight type communication. GMRS and FRS to me facilitate what you're doing. If you are hiking or you are with friends, you are caravanning across a state, you are off-roading, all those things to me scream FRS and GMRS because you don't need to be licensed to do that. How many times a year are you gonna do that? Are you gonna do that three times a year? Well, you may not wanna get a ham radio license just for that because again, you may not really care that much about the ham radio lifestyle. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. In the, in the long run, I, I would like to encourage you to look into ham radio. But if it's just about caravanning somewhere or going off-roading, FRS and GMRS is generally fine. I would give you the, the nudge that GMRS is a, a little bit better in terms of your power output, your capabilities, particularly when you start dipping into using repeaters, if those things exist in your area. Now, as far as preparedness goes, Handing out FRS radios to neighbors when there's a power outage, think of Texas right this year, Texas. Uh, in fact, I was, I was hanging out with a friend, hi Sonia and Darren, Sonic D, and they were showing me pictures last night. I, I went to go see them while I was out here. And they were showing me pictures of their, you know, their new home in Texas. And it was you know, snow that had accumulated over the course of a week just, just piling up on the ground, which never happens out here. So it was, it was really fascinating. 
hey, that's a good time to maybe have FRS and GMRS radios that your neighbors all have, then they can stay in communication for whatever reason. Hey, I've got power. Hey, I don't have power. I've got a generator. Come borrow my generator. Whatever. And, of course, uh, once you start doing this handing out of radios, you've got all these handhelds all over the place. How do you interop interoperate with potentially other people that may need help or communicate to a repeater and ask for, I don't know, insulin? <coughs> well, you could have a mobile 50-watt radio in your home with a decent antenna on the roof, and you could communicate to one of those repeaters I mentioned before. But not all great FRS, GMRS, why might I want to skip it? Generally, I feel like there are a lot of good sides, but there are some downsides to this. So UHF only. For me, this is just a kind of a non-starter. I think they're fine. Again, I have nothing wrong, and, and very specifically if you're doing off-road, if you are neighborhood cons, that kind of thing, UHF is fine. However, I always prefer, prefer VHF. It's just generally the band I use when I'm on handhelds. It works out further. Repeaters seem to get me out a little bit further. That's my experience. Again, I'm in Southern California, so everything's just mountains that I'm aiming at with my, with my radios. Uh, channel crowding is a real thing, particularly if you live in a busy suburbs like I do. You will find yourself in a situation where there are one channel that's completely saturated. GMRS, FRS has a lot of channels, so why can't you just slide down you know, to other channels? Sure, why not? I think GMRS handhelds look kind of funky. Personal opinion, I appreciate that they have insert bow fangs, right? You can buy a bow fang that is frequency agile and you can program FRS and GMRS on that. Um, yes, but, yes, but, you can see my video for more information, but I don't necessarily encourage people to do this. I don't necessarily encourage people go and reprogram their bow fang. Uh, to be FRS and GMRS. So that's kind of a recommendation of mine is to not necessarily go down that road. Let's speak about the Baofeng since it was kind of brought up. Um, so if you have a Baofeng, which many of you do, that are, is frequency agile, meaning you can program it outside of amateur radio. A lot of Baofengs are now getting uh, throttled to specifically just the amateur bands. But let's say you had one of those Baofengs that could work outside FRS, GMRS frequencies. I don't care if you if you program your Baofeng with FRS and GMRS. However, from my point of view, from running this channel, I'm not going to tell you to go like break a law. I appreciate it's kind of a, a very light law. So just keep that in mind. I, I, do what you got to do. You're an adult. You know how to handle the uh, the information I'm providing. They make getting on GMRS repeaters really easy though. So while I'm not saying to go do this, uh, they do make it kind of easy if you were to program your Baofeng and you wanted to be able to communicate to a GMRS repeater. It's, it's pretty easy to do so. And they, they do okay for, for GMRS and FRS. So um, I feel like if, if they so wanted to, they could have easily made GMRS-specific radios, which ultimately they did. Other companies did this. But at the same time, I've just got to state emphatically, I'm not telling you to go break the law. So there you go. All right, let's talk about CB, Citizens Band, or the FRS GMRS of the past. I'm kidding, of course. CB is similar to FRS and GMRS in that it is a channelized service. There are, I don't know, 30, 40 plus channels. Actually, there's more than that. It is four watts max output, although I know that very few people, there are many people who run power, run amplifiers with their radios to get more power output, and it's kind of one of those running a bow fang on FRS and GMRS. A ton of people do it, and nobody really cares. I get that. People only care when you become a problem. The frequency space that it operates in is 11 meters, which is uh, lower than that of 10 meters, which is what amateur radio operators get. You have now dipped outside of VHF, UHF by dipping into this 11 meter space. So keep that in mind. It is going to behave differently, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Single sideband is one of the modes. It is the rarer of the modes. You have to have a more specific radio if you're going to do single sideband. Case in point, this Bearcat 980 SSB is 
uh, single sideband radio. It also does AM. But the more classic CBs, the CBs that you see all the time, they are going to be AM, amplitude modulation as the primary mode. What does that mean for you watching me who's like, what service should I try? It means that the, um, the mode of operation being AM is going to be less efficient than that of single sideband. You're going to be able to make longer contacts over single sideband than you will with AM. So the general recommendation is get a single sideband CB if that's the area that you wanted to go. And I'm looking in the chat. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Appreciate that. Ham Radio for non techie state. Thanks for watching the live stream. Appreciate it. Yeah, well, I had a lot of bumps in, uh, along the way, so we, we've got things sorted out a little bit here. And just for those that are interested, there are handheld CB radios, but most of them are kind of meh. Case in point, that is a help. I need help. General Electric CB handheld radio. That orange thing in the middle is the PTT. So pretty funny. Uh, CB, intro to ham radio? Uh, JK? Seriously, I'm, I'm just kidding. CB deserves a lot of credit. It, it doesn't get enough credit, I feel like, in a time where CB was at its prominence, was before cell phones, and it helped to bring people together. I don't think that hams or anyone else should, should really look down on any particular radio service because I think they all have their own specific value. It may not be the value you're looking for, but it still has value. So keep that in mind, the good things about CB. No license needed for any of it. Most mobile installations um, that are good in working order work pretty well. And they're generally okay for close-in talking. And when the solar cycle is high, which we're rolling into in the next you know, couple of years here, CB is going to do great. You're going to get a lot of skip. Skip shooting is one of the terms in CB. That means you're getting refraction off the ionosphere. You're getting beyond line of sight communication. So your radio is literally going to be shooting out RF. It's going to hit the ionosphere, bounce down, and it's going to go around the Earth and potentially give you some really long contacts. That is possible with CB. Of course, it's also possible with ham radio. To a larger extent, it's possible with ham radio. Um, and that's, you know, that's good. Why not, right? It's an inexpensive radio to be able to do that with no license and to be able to get out there and set up a relatively decent station and be able to make cool contacts. Cheers, more power, but that requires the sun to help you with a lot of that. Further, before cell phones, what did people have in their cars? Many people had CB radios. So CB deserves credit. I'm not here to throw shade at any one service here at all. In fact, I'm not even going to tell you really. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to talk up ham radio. Don't worry. But I'm not going to say like, hey, neglect all these other services and only go ham radio because that's just not fair and that's not realistic, right? So why you should consider CB radio. Somewhere you've got an uncle with a CB radio that's not being used. Get their radios and their antennas and have some fun. Set it up. Use it. It's fine. You know, you may not have much activity in your area, so in that case, you can skip it. But if it's free, why not have it as a backup? You may want to use it in an emergency, and it's just an extra thing to, to have, right? That, that is another arrow in your quiver of preparedness. It's easy to get started with CB. It, it really is. You can go down to Walmart, buy a Cobra radio, and you get on the air. The antennas are pretty straightforward. You can use a mag mount. There's myriad options. It's effective for close-in comms, although the quality of signal can be lacking. I find that FRS and GMRS is generally a better signal quality. And high sun cycles make CB really shine, which is about the time we're rolling into. So if you were so interested in CB or you wanted to try it, it would be a good time if you were to start looking into that now. And I personally think that having a, a, any good radio station with a, with a decent antenna is always a fun challenge. So CB is that. I, I think that it is good practice for ham radio in the long run. That is not throwing shade. That's just my feelings. CB reasons to skip it. Most some of what CB does close in can be replaced with GMR and GMRS and FRS. In fact, with the 50 watt GMRS radios, you're, you're going to get way more effective comms and it's going to be more reliable. So I kind of give the nod to GMRS here in this case. Channel radios to me are lacking across the board, and that's the same case with GMRS. You're going to see that repeated again. One band operation, same thing I said about GMRS being UHF. CB is only 11 meters, which is, just for me, not, not that great. 
I would prefer lots of meters, lots of bands, lots of ways to communicate potentially. So that's my thoughts on that. Low power out of the box, four watts. Yes, I know people run amps, but yeah, it is what it is. It's something else you gotta buy or build or whatever. If all you have access to is AM, then it can be limiting, or, or limiting and kind of frustrating in cases, in most of those cases, get, get single sideband if you're determined to go down this road. Um, and if you're in the sticks, you, you might fare worse. It's meaning if you don't have a lot of people using CB in your area, if you don't have a freeway adjacent where there are truckers and you don't have a community that has CBs as a way to keep in touch, you, you might not get much of anything until the sun cycle comes around. All right, so ham radio. What's ham radio? Let's have it all and spend a lot of money in the process because that's what it is. It's always another $100 here, another $100 there. We're going to buy a radio that does VHF. We're going to buy a radio that does HF. We're going to buy multiple radios that do HF, right? Because ham radio is like the Voltron of the other services. You want it UHF? Sure. Here you go. Buy a VHF and, and have VHF for free since you get 6 meters and 10 meters as well when you get your technician. Want longer path contacts without a lot of issues? Sure, upgrade to general and then go extra and go crazy on the bands. Gobs of power, you generally can run up to 1500 watts uh, once you get your general and extra. Keep that in mind. If you're a technician, you're, you're, less, you're more limited. Uh, I think the upper limit is 200, 250 or 200 watts on, um, on the HF space, or is it all bands? Either way, it's, it's not really a limiting factor um, considering that HF for technicians is kind of lacking. The access you do get on HF bands is mostly CW, Morse code, except for 10 meters. No channels, all frequency, meaning you tune up your radio, you set a frequency, and that's the frequency you're transmitting on. That's the kind of uh, radio life that I want to play. I want to play frequency. I don't want to play channels. So I can just hop around to wherever I want. I find that easier to use or more straightforward that I'm remembering a frequency versus a channel, which really is a frequency, but it's obfuscated through the course of the service. Plus, it's more options, meaning more people can play and spread out and not talk over each other. Sure. Build in radios. Sure, why not? If you wanted to build a kit or you were more interested in electrical engineering, M radios is a space for you. GMRS and CB, not so much, not at least if you wanted it to be a legal radio. Ham radio is where that's at. Uh, so many modes beyond voice. So everything we've talked about, uh, FRS, GMRS, CB, those are all services that are voice mode based. FM, AM, single sideband, all voice. When you dip into ham radio, that's when you get access to data modes. So they're actually sending data over RF to be able to communicate well into the noise to make very impressive long distance contacts. Uh, there are other services that we are not talking about, like, um, what is it? See, can you, people are going to be commenting now. Let me, let me check the chat room for when people started blowing up. Um, I got to I gotta figure this out before you all catch me with the other service. Why? No, Mars? No, Mars. What is it? <laughs> There's only like four channels in it. Everybody loves it. Everybody loves the service, but nobody uses it, so... MERS, that's it, not Mars, MERS. Mars is a candy bar. MERS, everybody got it. Philip, thank you. Sean Riddle, he got it. Other services, MERS, <laughs> very good. <laughs> yes, all right. All right, so ham radio, why you should consider it. Are you the key master looking for your gatekeeper? Ham radio has all the keys. You can do whatever you want with ham radio, right? You're looking at a smattering of ham radios. Those are handhelds that are analog. Those are digital radios. Those are, that's an HF radio as well. One of them has APRS and one of them isn't even a radio. That's Raspberry Pi. But you, you can do a ton more with ham radio, but I appreciate it's not about getting in a car and going on a caravan and off-roading. You're largely gonna be using voice comms. So again, GMRS. Pretty much whatever you want to do with radio, ham radio can be done after throwing cash at it or time at it. That's kind of how ham radio works. You either throw cash at it or you throw time. It's not channelized. That's one of the big ones for me. Open to many modes, digital, voice, Morse code. You get the idea. Reasons not to consider it. The test 
And you're only going to have more problems with that. We ham radio operators are only going to have more problem bringing people into the hobby when the $35 fee is implemented. So I get it. It's a, it's a test. Why should you have to take a test to want to go talk to your Nana and Papa? Because you're going to be driving to Magic Mountain. I don't know. Um, yeah, no, it's a limiting factor. I appreciate it. I get it. I understand. And again, that's a, that's a lifestyle thing, right? Ham radio, there's partially a test because there's a lot of responsibility you're given. But the people that tend towards that are already kind of looking for that or are already interested in that deeper understanding of the electronics or the hacker mindset that goes into um, what it is we do. Again, if you're just off-roading, well, then maybe that lifestyle doesn't appeal to you. So I understand. Too much lifestyle, not enough doing. Well, for outsiders, things like POTA and SODA, etc., can be can seem exhausting. The cost can be a high cost. Ham radio is at its cheapest at the technician levels using repeaters, right? Local handheld simplex communication over repeater, or simplex communication in close, very close, and re repeater operation. But even then, the upper limit on some of those radios is now going over $500 if you're talking about recently dis uh, discontinued radios like the D74 by Kenwood. That increases the cost exponentially. But even the ones that are still being produced, you know, $350 for, for an HT for the top end, that's not cheap. Um, I appreciate that a Baofeng is, you know, 25 bucks, And I think that's why people go that route. But is a Baofeng much more than a GMRS radio? Sure, you get VHF, UHF, and you get um, obviously more capability for programming it, and it works on frequencies, but is it really that different? I don't know. I know it is, but hopefully you get what I'm throwing down, and that's kind of the point. And I'm pouring myself some more beer. Let's check the chat with the downtime here. What's going on, chat? <laughs> Sean Riddle said, my wife thought my power sport hobby was expensive till I got my ticket. Yes, I agree. But uh, while we're at this midway point, I want to remind everybody, we will be doing a Discord after chat. And uh, maybe we'll talk more about what happened today and what I've been doing this weekend. So if you're interested in that, follow to the link in the description to our Discord, which is both a text chat and a voice chat. And I'll be simulcasting to Twitch as well, which is Ham Radio Crash Course on Twitch. So consider following us along. Uh, the Bullfrog89 knows what's up. Late to the party, hanging out with Brian and Jason again. Can't wait to see that video. There are multiple videos, and they have actual families. These are real human beings, so they're, they've gone off to be with their families at this point, but I'm holding the fort down. Uh, Dawn, N5SKT. I have done so many videos on antennas, I'm not going to be talking about antennas because we're going to dip specifically into these different lifestyle things off-roading prepping other things like that and i'm going to give you my opinion um no this is not hoff brows beer racer x7 this is suds monkey and i'm here in austin texas that's an austin texas beer Okay, moving along. I'm sorry, the chat's kind of weird looking. Sorry about that. All right, so now let's dip into the lifestyles. So what I was, why did I start this with talking about services? I, again, this is for people that are coming to this fresh, that don't know much about ham radio, that they're looking for a solution on what radio should I get? Should I get an FRS radio or a GMRS radio? Should I look at ham radio? The idea here is to kind of explain what these services are, and then now let's ex talk about the lifestyles of many of these individuals that are looking at this for the first time and what I recommend. So I'm an off-roader. What do I buy? My answers here heavily depend on the group of people that you're hanging out with and what they're running. GMRS, go buy this mobile radio and these handhelds and pay the FCC their pittance. You can pretty much answer that with, with off-roading. I think you just go get GMRS, you pay for the license, you get on with life. You go back to doing what it is that you want to be doing, which is off-road. 
there's no reason not to just get a GMRS license, from my point of view. With that said, ham radio's test is not that hard to give you technician access. And getting access to technician means you can do things beyond just voice communications, which, as we'll talk about in a little bit, could be really, really useful. So keep that in mind. Um, but this also depends on your groups. If your entire group has no, no desire to mess with ham radio, then what's the point in you getting your ham radio license? Unless you're going to try and climb that off-road hill of bringing them into the fold of ham radio. And maybe you will, maybe you won't. So in the meantime, just get your GMRS license and get on the trail with them and have fun. CB, uh, let's <laughs> let's see what they have at Walmart today. Um, a well-tuned CB station is fun. There's still many off-roaders who run CB, but I see that as kind of moot at this point. I think everything that GMRS offers, and I'm specifically talking about GMRS, a licensed GMRS radio from the FCC, I think is a better solution for most off-roaders. Don't know why... Why do I have the FTM 400 there? That's not a GMRS radio. Ah, because of APRS. Yeah, well, uh, if you do get your ham radio license, you can get a radio like this one that's pictured here, the FTM 400, which gives you the ability to pull in your GPS beaconing data, seeing where you're at, and then squawking that out over RF, which could be picked up by a digipeter and placed online so that everybody knows where you're at at any one time. That was a mistake. I'm a prepper. This is a lifestyle. Um, Mount St. Helens is going to blow any day now. All the services. What is my recommendation? All the services. Have a CB. Get ham radio. Get FRS. Get GMRS. Get MERS. MERS. Thank you, MERS. Get MERS. If you want to be the, the prepper version of an 18 Echo Special Forces comms sergeant um, of your group or yourself, your family, whatever, you need to play ball in all the fields. You need to be able to use all the services, all the things. So what do I recommend? Just start building your collection of radios. And, and by building your collection, again, I always mean use them. <laughs> Understand how they work. Don't just say, well, I have this radio. I'm going to put it on the shelf and I'm good. No, you have to actually use this stuff. So keep in mind. Um, yeah, for you as a prepper, there's no reason to draw sides. All services are good and should be respected and are useful. With that said, handing out... Uh, like FRS radios like candy to your neighbors and being able to interoperate with them across other services seems like it could be a good thing and a helpful thing as a prepper, if I'm putting my prepper hat on. Nick Smith, because I'm traveling, all the chat rooms are kind of screwed up, so just keep that in mind. The chat that I'm displaying is just the YouTube chat. Sorry about that. Hey, Racer X, I'm just getting your uh, super chat right now. Racer X7, who is WZ8LHR, says, Thanks, Josh. Got my SCARS 17S easier than my Yesu 991 and FT3DR. Just need to make a QSO. Looking forward to POTA coming up. All right. Hey, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. The, the chat room is partially obfuscated while I'm going through the slides. That's kind of just the way I have uh, things set up. And if I didn't mention it, Kenny Care, Kenny Carberry, sorry about that, got my general ticket today. Thanks to you for all the helpful and educational content. KC1IIQ, I did say that. Well, I'm saying it again. Thanks for the super chat. I really do appreciate it. All right. Hiker, lol, what cell phone signal? Again, the lifestyle. I recommend hikers get their license, unless they're going to pay or satellite services for a sat phone or a spot beacon or something along those lines. But that's not really a radio service. That's paying for a service, something that you pay someone for monthly to give you the privilege of having a, a dongle, a doohickey that you keep on your person and keep it charged that you could phone for help if you needed it. With that said, I think that hikers should think about getting um, their ham radio license. Getting an APRS-based handheld or APRS-enabled handheld, extremely valuable in those cases. I think that that gives peace of mind to significant others that are panicking if you're running late. APRS saves a lot of days, not necessarily from an emergency standpoint, or I'm sure it has, but from a 
piece at home standpoint. Ham radio will help you do that. Get into summits on the air and parks on the air. You burnt all those calories to get to where you're going anyway, so why not have a little bit of fun once you get there? Hikers in particular, I feel like I feel like that's just the nut we need to crack is that summits on the air needs to be marketed a little bit differently to hikers. Because I think hikers would be really on board with most, most, not all. Maybe the super ultra people might not like it. but Also, I think G GMRS is good too. Maybe a bow thing. Um, yeah, again, if you're if you're a hiker and you're middle of nowhere and you have no cell phone signal, am I really going to begrudge somebody with a Baofeng that has GMRS and FRS frequencies if that's what they need to get help if they were ever in that situation? Or more likely, phoning for help for somebody else? No, not at all. So, I'm a gun person. What personal first aid kit? That's the lifestyle. Uh, there is something to be said for spilling signal if you don't need more power to talk to a group don't use it so if you are specifically a part of the gun community you are you are pro-gun and you're looking for some kind of communications for you and your team while i appreciate that uh, ham radio does give you these wider contacts a lot of times you may not want that you may want close in comms you may want to scale back the power if you're already running a baofeng something along those lines Spilling signal implies that you're putting out too much power, so you're actually uh, providing signal intelligence to everybody that has the capability to receive your signal outside of the sphere of space that you're actually trying to communicate in. You may just want to have small unit tactics or small unit communications for your group of people, and uh, all of a sudden you're talking to a five quarter mile radius. Um, all of a sudden it's like, wow, that's a lot of people that could be listening to what I'm saying. Um, with that said, there may also be some level of encryption that you may want. I appreciate that if you are trying to run foul of the law, then that encryption will not help you at all because that encryption the government already knows about and knows how to handle. So you're not getting away from anything by having any kind of business level radio encryption that's not anything to worry about but maybe you do want to go that extra level your smaller group have have a business radio license and uh you look into that specifically i am no expert in that space i'm not even that knowledgeable in this space i just know that it's possible to have encrypted radios that are business radios but generally i believe you have to be in and around your business so keep that in mind uh, so for complicated use cases, ham radio, long distance comms is going to be preferred in most cases. For HF, for instance, if you are doing small unit tactics or you're, you're doing close in communication, GMRS is going to be fine. FRS is going to be okay. Ham radio is going to be great because you can adjust the power back. You could get some APRS. You could get Bluetooth connections. So you can do uh, all the different kind of cool tactical, tactical apps that are coming out now that will leverage the capability of your radio. ATAC, ATAC, look into ATAC, A-T-A-K is gonna give you some pretty cool information. But if you want like um, larger signal intelligence across just all the frequencies, you're gonna start looking into software-defined radios and listening on really broad frequency spaces. If, if Red Dawn, right, I know this is super, Super cliche where I'm going with this, but uh, if Red Dawn were to happen, they're not going to be on ham radio frequencies. Largely, they might even be using spread spectrum or something along those lines that we're not even really capable of, of being able to receive. But with that said, shortwave and frequency spaces within shortwave are going to be more interesting from an information gathering standpoint. So, Oh, if you want to use encrypted, it's supposed to say want, not WAN. So, correction there. All right, let's check the chat. See what you guys are saying. Hey, super chat from Paul Spurlock. Are you interested in P25 trunk system? Hard to find info on how this works, how to monitor it, and a lot may be interested because it's where police EMS talk. Love your vids. Thanks a ton. Uh, Paul, I'll take a bit of a, a side tangent here because it's kind of in line with this. There are still trunk systems uh, for P25 that are in the clear, but a lot have gone encrypted. So even if you had a receiver, like a scanner, that can deal with trunked jumping frequencies around like that, it, it may not matter because it's totally encrypted. 
So generally how you get around this is two ways. You go spend a lot of money on a scanner that does trunk systems and P25, and it kind of does all the secret sauce for you. Or you got, you'll buy like two RTL SDRs and you use, um, what's the, the application? Uh, you can run off of Raspberry Pi that will do trunked radio service. It'll use one RTL SDR or one SDR to listen to the main control frequency, and then the other ones will, will do the job with following something trunk, P trunk, anyway. So many ones. SDR trunk. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Unitrunker is the other one. Unitrunker is the one I'm actually familiar with. I got to say, this, um, this beer is making me a little gassy. This is not good for a, a live stream. I'll read the slides. Uh, okay. Unitrunker on Windows. Yeah. Okay, so thank you for the super chat. I hope that answered your question. I um, I can understand the interest in getting to trunked radio solutions, but I also understand it's kind of a uh, mainly just for receiving, and you're really going to need to look in your local area and see if there is encrypted radios. So what if you're a LARPer? My Airsoft weighs as much as my AR. So for you, there's only one solution, PRC-152. That's the only option. For your lifestyle choice, PRC-152 is the only way to go. No VFO. What's a VFO? No key fill device. Never mind. It's fine. And lastly, if you can't get a PRC-152, buy a Baofeng shell. So you fit in the LARPer game. I appreciate. I am just ribbing people. I know that uh, I don't mean anything specifically. And for my fan gang, the last lifestyle. Uh, keep being awesome. <laughs> Much like the credit to sea beers earlier, the Baofeng and those that use them do not need to be hated on. I wanted to make this point right at the end so I can kind of wrap up the show a little bit on this as, as I answer some questions. But um, there are a myriad people who have found ham radio because of the Baofeng, who have found GMRS and FRS because of the Baofeng, who have become interested in the communications we do may not be the service you're doing right now but um it's still a good thing in the long run the baofeng is a net positive versus net negative and i think it's actually vastly stronger on the net positive side so for all the fang gangers out there i would uh, i think you'd appreciate a japanese radio a little bit better handheld and i mean specifically japanese i'm not saying don't you know video coming out on one of these weird bad boys but um Really, I, I think that for a lot of you, not all, a lot, I think you'd really enjoy a better handheld made by a Japanese company than just buying more Chinese radios or more expensive Chinese radios. Even the $150 Wuxian, which is really good, really good, has a level of kind of jank still, polish that isn't applied that a lot of the Japanese radios do have. So if you find yourself do if you find yourself enjoying ham radio, think about checking out a Japanese radio. At least try one. However, if um, if the world of ham radio FRS GMRS starts and ends with with you owning a Baofeng and that's that's just your radio that Baofeng, so be it. No harm done. And uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's my message to to the hams. So there you go. There's my slides for today. Thank you. <laughs> yeah tom schaefer good point no matter what radio make sure you can program it without a computer yeah I'm, okay yeah sure yeah sure very good anybody have questions or comments before we start wrapping things up and head over to discord Hopefully I answered some questions uh, for people who may not know about some of these services. I think most of you probably did. They're watching me live. You're probably take a time out of your day, carve a little bit of time out to watch me, and I really do appreciate it. So thank you for doing that. It really means a lot. Hopefully, though, this helps out some other people, people starting out. Yeah, I generally agree. You should know how to program your radio manually, of course. 
Why is that doing that? What a weird thing. Hey, look at that. We fixed it. <laughs> Just like that. Monster, does Brushwood have a certificate? Uh, no, not yet. What is the average air speed of an unladen swallow? What do you mean, African or European swallow? You can't set me up for things like that. That's too easy. Hey, thank you, WY7. Papa Dave. Right on. Hey, I think I know who you are. I think I DM'd you. Did I? I think I did. What is your favorite color? Blue. No, yellow. That's the answer, but my favorite color is orange. Uh, Kieran? Is it Kieran? Kieran rolls. Can you go through how to do the QLS card thing? Seven threes from BK4. I actually have a video, and the, the what you're looking for is QSL card. QSL, three letters. Um, go to my channel and search for QSL, and I've got a whole video on getting started making your own QSL cards or paying a printing service. By the way, there are um, a myriad of very good, inexpensive printers out there who don't charge a whole lot and have really good deals. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to ask this individual if I can uh, share their information, but they have very good prices and I would like to I would like to share that information if they if they would like me to. But I need to reach out to them first. So, uh, maybe next week nobody go off and and uh, freak out and go buy a bunch of QSL cards. Bill Holden says, I saw you are in Austin. Welcome to Five Land. Cheers. Thank you very much. I am. Enjoy your cat cups. I'm really disappointed by that chat. I've got to figure out, I've got to redo the whole chat thing. When I'm at home, the chat looks great. Uh, why are you yelling at me, Bill Holden? Bill Holden, why are you yelling at me? Bill Holden, do you know what this is? The, 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 the two Bs? The two Bs? Anybody know? If you know what the two Bs are, then you know why I'm in Texas. Pilot Boy, tips for starting a ham radio channel. Yes. Um, I want you to explain. So this is, what I, this is what I think you should do, starting out um, personally, a YouTube channel. I want you, for ham radio, I want you to make a video explaining your process for solving a problem. And I want to be really clear. <laughs> it, it, it's got to be a good solution to the problem. It, it's got to be a better way of doing it or coming to the right solution. That's one way. I think that um, I think that always having a good how-to video, put it in your, your, your library, a good how-to video is always of high value within amateur radio. Again, it needs to be the right solution or a good solution. It can't be like a JB Weld, uh, the whole radio until it worked kind of solution, right? So make a video on that. Get yourself a tripod. I cannot state this enough. Get yourself a tripod. Get yourself a good audio solution. Not expensive, good. And shoot your shots. Move your angles a lot. Keep moving angles. And start out your video saying what you're going to do right up front, just right up front. I'm going to show you today how to do blah. And then boom, go to cut to a completely different scene and start or throw your logo up for like a second. But don't go nuts with the intro. So there you go. That's it. And then you can be like me. No, I'm just kidding. You, you, you probably could because that's what I do, <laughs> I guess. So I often come out here and, and maybe uh, maybe on the after chat because I've got a I've got two cameras right now. So on the after chat I'll play around a little bit more. I brought a lot of stuff. I brought a lot of stuff, and man, maybe we'll explore some of the rafters here for antennas. Who knows? We'll see what we can do. I'll show you around a little bit here, but not too much. 
Uh, K8TSG. So we're dipping into what the after chat. We're going to talk about a little bit on the after chat. Uh, I will say that how this place is so different that I almost don't recognize it. It is so different. I It's been two years since I've been here. And it is impressive how much work they've done. And it's awesome. They've done a fantastic job. So much fun it's been. Uh, Dawn, I will be streaming on Twitch, but I don't think I am. I don't think I am right now, but who knows? For the after chat. Never have a logo intro over three seconds. Monster, I, I kind of agree. I think mine might be pushing five or six or so, but I agree. Your logo should be incredibly fast, and, and um, this is giving away some of the magic a little bit. I don't have a video intro that is the same every time. I try and use the background as a time lapse of what the topic is going to be on. I don't know if anybody caught that, but my Ham Radio Crash Course, when it pans and then it's playing the intro in the background, it's usually a time lapse of parts of the video that aren't actually in the prolong video. It's usually B-roll or a time lapse that I made. Just ask not a Rubicon about doing intros, bro. Yeah, I think he definitely sits... I think he values everyone's individual time for well over three seconds in his intros. Yeah, speaking of people that are blowing up, not a Rubicon's killing it. I mean, he's he's not wrong, man. He's he's got a he's got a good market that he's going after. The off road community is obviously saying GMRS is where we're going. I would have liked them to go ham radio, but again, I get it. All the reasons I mentioned before, the test, right? All the lifestyle people, and he has like literally aligned his Jeep um, specifically towards that market. Talk about niching your YouTube so that you're focused on a very he, he, that's his market. He's hitting his market. If you think you're if you're watching his channel as a ham radio guy and you're getting upset, you're not his market. He doesn't care how you feel. He didn't care. I mean, he does. He, he cares that you watch. Sure, put an ad in front of people's faces, but um, he's he knows his market. It it both is ham radio and isn't. He's it's just a different niche of ham radio that he appeals to. Yeah, I hope everybody understands. I don't think he's the worst at all. I like I like not a Rubicon. They're fun videos. I enjoy watching them. I don't take personal offense. I'm not a sad ham. I'm, I made this channel... I didn't put it so succinctly as he did. I made this channel to focus on the fun and helping you, you, go do ham radio. I don't want you to watch me and go like, oh, Josh is amazing. No, I want you to feel empowered to go do this. Like, you should want to go do this. Like, you should want to go play radio. Whatever the radio is. FRS, GMRS, CB, ham radio. I don't care. I just want you to get interested in RF. I think RF is fun. And you can play in all the RF sandboxes. I happen to find that ham radio is the sandbox that offers me the most that I'm looking for. But that's what I'm encouraging people. Because to be honest, I don't really like... I don't like cell phone companies. I don't like giving them money. Um, I don't like that their service can get shut off and all the other fun stuff. So that's why I... I value having redundant comms and all that fun stuff. So hopefully. Um, thank you, Nick Smith. 73. Travel safe. Thank you so much. Uh, DX Commander is the man. Thank you, Mike K at MRD. Maybe I'll stream from my phone. Maybe we'll worry about that later. Um... Yeah, I'll let you guys take the Rubicon comments to, to his channel. Go give him the views. I'm not going to argue about that. I like his videos. I think they're entertaining. That is where I will leave it. All right. We have a lot of good comments going on. I appreciate everybody watching. I really do. I'm sorry that we got set off uh, a bit late. I really am. Thank you for sticking around, by the way. Um, thank you, obviously, to my wonderful host for allowing me to set up here. There will be some videos coming out. They're a lot of fun. 
I'm tired and everybody is more tired than me, which I will explain in a future video, but not now. I'm going to play you out with some of my patron fans. Thank you, the Patreon. Super appreciate it. Uh, this, I think, is a little bit old. I tried to update it, but I, I don't think I got the right one. That's my fault. Not you, patrons. I appreciate you. I really do. Thank you so much for the support. What's coming up? Um, I have a POTA video that I edited on the plane. I have two more technician videos that I shot, started editing. I will edit those on the plane tomorrow, finish up the uh, the last editing on the POTA activation. I've actually got a, like, a pretty decent amount of videos backlogged right now that i got to start um, getting edited and get up. I am doing a video that's not going to go on my channel. It's going on a... Um, going somewhere else and I will be finishing that up next week I think I have mostly what I need mostly mostly what I need so that's gonna be fun when I get to share that with you guys I've been doing some stuff outside like this uh, field craft recently and now um, this other thing which I feel honored to be, have been asked so you involved thank you so much hey thank you Ray appreciate it and I, I am I <laughs> I am, this is my travel setup, so I, I hope the stream is okay. I really do have to work on this chat. I, I really don't like the red. I don't like any of this. I don't like any of it. I got to fix it. Maybe that's going to be what I do on the plane. Start doing some CCS uh, cascading style. I, I need to take the, sca the cascading style sheets from home and put them up here. Once I get that straightened out, it's going to be good. All right, so for everybody in the chat that I missed... I really apologize. I see animes in there. Uh, you're going to have to message me or join the Discord and tell us, but I know you're calling yourself Wild Cascadia Radio, and I always feel bad. I know you as anime, but do you really do you want me to say, Wild Cascadia Radio? You know, I, I don't know. Where am I? I am in Austin, Texas. Beautiful part of the country. I really do like Austin. Uh, Humidity is a little much, though. And the insects. Oh, the animals out here want you to die. I saw a fox today. Saw a fox. That was pretty cool. Okay, we wrapped it. There we go. Good. Let's go with that one. Better, more flattering shot of me. Mm. Paul Mitchell with the hot take to wrap up the, uh, the stream. Wow. Hot takes. I, I think that... Um, I think that anyone who immediately starts attacking uh, an institution that has existed for over 100 years and just says dead, you may be right, but do you gain any positivity or personal benefit from being right? No. If you are right, that would be a loss to the entirety of ham radio if the ARRL is dead. So I'll leave you with that. I think the ARRL is important. I think they're good. I think there are many people there that are doing a good job, and I just, I'll just i give them a cat cup cheers on that. So thank you, ARRL. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, Daniel Curry. So really, I'll leave you with this. And I will wrap up. The last time I was here, two years ago, when we shot the um, all the video for Ham Nation. Ham Nation. Whew. Rogue. <laughs> Modern Rogue. While I was here at Modern Rogue headquarters, my family, with my mother-in-law, Leia and the kids, they were at the, the uh, it's a bridge, right, where the bats come out? And they told me, they're like, it was awesome. It, it wasn't many bats, but they said, oh, it was awesome. It's so great. I was here. We were, we were cranking on, on videos. And boy, did we crank on some videos today. And man... You know what? I, I, I'll, I'll let the videos speak for themselves. I hope you enjoy them. I don't know when they're coming out. Don't ask me and don't bug them either. But they will be out and I had a lot of fun making them. So, uh, slapped ham looks interesting tonight. Okay. Natural bridge caverns. I think so. Yeah. Anyway, the link is in the description for the Discord. I really do hope you follow us along from this after chat or this live stream over to the after chat. I will be live streaming to Twitch. I don't have... Hey, you know what? Maybe maybe that's what we do with Twitch. How do we put radios up in here? I got some radios and I got some antennas. Oh, maybe you join me over in Twitch and we figure it out. All right, until I talk to you again.